I need to get right into this today, and uh, I, I want to share a message with you. This is my last one, and Pastor will be here next week to share a very important part of the Soul I May Know series about being in the Spirit and being used by the Spirit of God. Um, I didn't have time to cover that, so it worked out perfectly that God put that on his heart. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about what it looks like to be an all-in church, and one of the scriptures I always go to, to, to see a great example of the church is Acts 2, 42 through 47. So turn with me to your Bibles there, Acts 2, 42 through 47. This is a staple scripture at Calvary. Um, it's, it's milk, bread, butter for Calvary, okay? And the reason why is because this church changed the world, so why not try to be, you know, just like this church, right? Like, what's the focus? What made this church change the world, and why not be like this church, right? So that's, that's what we're going to look at today. Um, I'm a little excited. I'm a little excited. Wow, you guys are like on fire. Thank God for a worship team. Thank God for, praise God. Uh, you may not realize this, but like the sound team here today and many of the cast and crew from the play, and then like five of them or more are in the play. So like they're doing overtime this week, you know what I mean? Like talk about being all in. Like that's just a great example for us, the tech team and everyone here, our ushers, our greeters who are, are going to be here all week. Uh, this is going to be, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting week for us. And we're definitely going all in this week for what God wants to do during our play for Convinced. So here's our, here's our reading today. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. This is verse 32. And to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, and to prayer. Key word for me was devoted. And all. A deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. So a very generous church. They worshiped together at the temple each day. So very focused on worshiping God like we just did. And they met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while, I love this, they don't take the credit for it. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And when I read this scripture, I wanted to know what would make God want to add people to that fellowship? Why would God add more souls to that church? And I truly believe it's because they were being good stewards with what God has given them. They were being good stewards with what? With their lives. They were being good stewards with obedience. They were obeying God. They were doing what you're supposed to do. They were giving. They were serving. They were loving one another. They were focused on the mission of Jesus Christ. So I want to break that down deeper today and show you how the Christian life really makes up three things. And I'm inspired to share this because of this scripture, okay? Because of Acts 2, 42 through 47. I want to go a little deeper and show you how they actually did this. And the first one is... The reason why I call this all in church is because they were, one, devoted to God. They were, devo they were devoted to God in a loving relationship with God. They worshiped God. They worshiped him. Just like today, but it wasn't just on Sunday, it was every day. They had a relationship with him. They were praying, they were reading their Bibles, right? So to say for them, for them it was apostles teaching, okay? So they, they, had, the, they had the Old Testament texts the prophet's words, but then they had the apostles' teaching. What does that mean? That means that the apostles who walked alongside Jesus, they shared what they experienced. So whatever they saw were witnesses of Jesus, right? And so whatever they saw, they passed it down to the church orally. They shared it. And so the church is coming together every day. They're hungry to know more about Jesus. They're hungry to know about Jesus. So they come together every day. For us, thank God, we have the Bible because we live in Dover, Delaware, and we have to work, right? So it's kind of hard to get together every day on a Sunday, like every day being Sunday, that'd be awesome. Um, but we can't because we have responsibilities. Our culture is different. But we have the Bible, don't we? And we have prayer, and we have Bible studies, and we have times of fellowship with other believers. So they were devoted to this. Now, why? Why would God add more people to their fellowship? Because they were obeying his commands. His commandment in Matthew 22 through 37 and 40 says this, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That's all in church. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor. So love those in the community as you would love yourself. Love your brother and sister in Christ as you would love yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. They were faithful to what God asked them to do. And because of that, you know what I think really was going on? I think that God saw a church where unbelievers could come and know Christ and thrive. And that when someone had a need, they were ready to help each other out. They didn't need dream funds. They didn't need dream funds. They gave everything they could. They, gave, they had extra fields. They sold those extra fields and gave it to the apostles to distribute to the people in need. That's literally what they did. Barnabas had so much property, he sold one of the fields and gave the money towards the church so they could use it. How cool is that? to help those in need, to care that deeply for the family of God and to make sure everyone's being, you gotta understand too, at this time, the oppression of Rome is so heavy and so strong that most of these people are poor. Most of these Jewish people who are becoming believers are poor. And so they don't have enough to do what they need to do to, to survive. I mean, they're eating loaves of bread and fish every day. And, and that's it. They didn't have the extravagant food that, that kings and queens would have to eat. So for them, this was huge. It meant that you love each other if you're taking care of each other like that. What I love is that they were devoted to their relationship with God. And someone one day asked me, Ryan, how do you do it? Like, how do you, how do you like pour into the church and how do you pour into your family? How do you deal with your own struggles? And those, those times are tough. Meanwhile, care about the lost and those who don't believe in Jesus. How do you do that? It was a really good question, and right away, my mind came to a water dispenser, which isn't, where did it go? I lost it. It's gone. Oh, here it is. I had it in the first service up here. The first thing that came to mind was this water dispenser. Really simple. This houses, you can put it on the floor if you don't mind. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for being all in for a moment. <laughs> this represents my capacity of what I can do today. Okay, and the only way I could possibly do or be all in is I have to receive all that God has for me. And I keep a lifeline with God, you know? It's kind of like those planes that get fueled in midair. As I'm on the go, God keeps fueling me in the middle of my journey. Um, there's a key, though, to this. I stay like that because I don't have a lid on how much I want of God, I'm never satisfied. I want more. And I never allow anything to try to stop me from receiving. And there's, there are seasons in my life where I can tell that, I'm, you know, that I got the lid on and I've made a mistake because I'm out there in this world trying to reach people and I gotta be ready to receive what God has for me so that I can open up that spout and pour out and give to someone in need. See, an all-in person is always connected to God. An all-in person is always dependent on God. We rely on the power of God. That's why when I went through a horrible year of my life, I was still able to pour into people because I wasn't operating on my power. I was operating on God's power. I was operating on what God was giving me. That's why I could go home and pour into my family and my kids and then also receive because I was connected to the vine. I was connected to God. I was dependent on God. I also couldn't help but reach out to people because as I love God, I obey his commandments, which means to love the church and to love the lost. You see what happens there? When we have an all-in relationship with God, we can't help but love the lost. It's just going to flow in you, and then you're going to have it in you to pour out to everyone in need. That's the missing link. That's actually the missing link. That's the missing connection is if we don't have a vibrant relationship with God, we may not feel as burdened for the loss. That actually does happen. But as we are close to God, we're close to what his heart beats for and it's for souls. And we'll hear God's cries. When you read the Bible, you can't help but see Jesus focus on his father, on training his disciples, the church, and then reaching the lost. And I'm jumping ahead, ain't I? If you can see our notes. 
So we need to have a loving relationship with God, right? And let God pour into you. There's another thing, though, about loving God. Being devoted to God means being loyal to him when everyone else is going against him. This is tough. This is real in our world. And I want to go to Acts 4 to give you an example of how the first church handled this, particularly Peter and John. Now, Peter and John were being brought before the Jewish Sanhedrin, the religious leaders at that time that did not like Jesus and framed Jesus as being a a blasphemer, even though he wasn't, he was Jesus, and um, he was from God, so he was allowed to do what he did. They used that against Jesus, lied about him, he's crucified. Well, these guys, these same guys that were behind all the schemes, They don't like Peter and John because Peter and John are preaching. And Peter and John one day prayed for a man to be healed that was crippled. It wasn't like they were at work staying on a table disrupting work saying, you all need Jesus. Or they weren't on the corner of a a street in New York City saying, you're all going to hell. It wasn't like that. They were loving someone and healing him. And they were being called into question. Do you realize that that's actually kind of what's going on in our world? Christians are loving people, but then we're getting called out for things that aren't, or like we're getting called out for that's wrong. Pay attention. Pay attention. Or also, we're loving God and being devoted to God, and therefore, we're being attacked because of our love and devotion for God. Pay attention to that because it's happening in our world right now a lot. Now, listen to what Peter says to them, this is why it's the worship song today, the name of Jesus. He said this, um, Peter filled, look at verse 8 for time's sake, Acts 4, 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the power of powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Go down to verse 12. For there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. He's talking about the name of Jesus. We were singing a powerful song just now. We were singing theology, the beautiful name of Jesus. Verse 13, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Wow. Wow. You know what happens when you hang out with God? Start looking like Jesus, right? You start, when you follow Jesus, you start looking like Jesus, and you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit like he was, like Peter was. And he was operating on the Spirit's power, not his physical power. And that's what Jesus wants to do with you. He wants to fill you with his power, operating on his power. So even when you don't think you can love people, even when you don't think you can be a witness, his Spirit does it through you. And then he says, and then he lifts up the name of Jesus. He gets bad news about something in his life that discourages him, puts him out. So turn around for me, Tony. Thank you for coming down. My man right here finds out something terrible about his family member, discourages him, distracts him from the call. Turn around, man, you're out. One by one, life circumstances start hitting them. And now we have two people not able to impact the crowd. Let's say you're the fields. So two less people working. And then my sister in Christ here finds out some devastating news. Do you mind turning around too? She's out. Hey, my brother here is struggling with something deep. And it happens. It's depression. Turn around. Look what's happening. So now we have two people in the field instead of six. The beauty of the church is that right now people would be coming down to mentor and counsel them and help them through this journey. Right now, so a couple people come down to each person and they would be there for them. But I want one person to counsel while the other person turns around and takes over where they left off. 
Because this is the beauty of the church. The beauty of the church is while we're struggling with stuff, someone else helps take over and keeps going to reach a loss. This is why we have counselors. This is why we have counseling. This is why we have mentoring and people should be discipling. This is why we have groups because people need help to grow and they need to go through things. But then you have support and you have the body of Christ here to help. But then someone else takes over. So if you came over to help, turn around and look at the audience. Because now what's happening is, is now they've helped heal each other. So now even more people are going out and reaching the lost. Amen. You guys may be seated. Thank you. That's the beauty of the church. And that's why we have to love each other and fight for each other instead of with each other. We're there to help each other in the battle. Not to be pawns of Satan to add to the, the fire and the, and the issues. Right? By the way, can I tell you guys something that really burns me? Is that the more we focus on ourself and what happens inside the church too much, the less we do missions, the less we reach the lost. But here's what's really cool. The more we help the lost, the more the little stuff on the inside doesn't really matter. That little stuff doesn't really get to us anymore. Why? Because you see the world and you see how bad it is and you go, oh, I'll just let that comment slide because it's all good. They're my brother in Christ. We make mistakes. We say things we shouldn't say. We're not perfect. That's actually Colossians chapter 3. Make allowance for each other's faults, the Bible says. In other words, be gracious. How cool would it be to be an all-in church that's so focused on reaching the lost that if someone says something mean or rude or you get a look, it just bounces right off you. Because you're looking at the desperation of the lost out there in this world and it just means more than what's going on inside here. I mean, we really don't have time to bicker with each other in the body of Christ. We really do not have time. And we really shouldn't because the enemy is already doing that enough. The world is already doing that enough. And exactly what the enemy wants is for us to tear each other apart from the inside out. That's why we have to be devoted to loving one another and to look at each other like Jesus looked at the church. Jesus was on the cross being crucified and said, Father, forgive them. I guarantee you, you can forgive your brother or sister in Christ. And if you can't, he will through you. If you let him, if we let him, we will have a love from God that would get over some things that we need to get over. I know that's not easy. I know I've been there, but I don't operate on my power. I operate on the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Our band's going to come up here because we're going to respond today. And I want you to be praying and thinking about this because today I just want to encourage you to go all in for God, to be all in this way, to be devoted to God, loving him and being loyal, being devoted to the body of Christ, loving, loving the church and being loyal to the church. They were all in, devoted to seeing the lost follow Jesus. You've heard me say it today. Paul said something huge in Acts 20. His heart is just amazing when it comes to the lost. He says this, Acts 20, 24, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. My life is worth nothing unless I'm doing that. That's what he's saying. In other words, I don't have a reason to live unless I'm living to share the gospel. Wow, that's an all-in church. I have a tripod up here to help illustrate something. I'm seeing that the Christian life, the gospel-centered life, is really made up of like three legs or three focuses. The first one is we love God. And out of that love flows everything else that's proper, right? This is going to fall though, isn't it? By the way, this reminds me of the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You need all three to operate properly. But then he says, love the church. Okay, maybe sometimes that's more like this. 
Okay, maybe, maybe that's a little, hey, I'm almost there. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got it. You know what we tend to do in Christianity, and this is why we're doing this series. We tend to focus on our relationship with God, and then we try to get along with each other and love each other here. By the time we're all done with that energy, guess what gets missed? Reaching the lost. Christianity will fall or is falling in some places because we're not reaching the lost. And we're going to get frustrated with the world. Why won't they change? Why do they hate us? Well, because we got to love them and help them. It doesn't stand. The Christian life is not complete without that third leg, without that third focus. And for some reason, it can take so long to get to that place. But when we give our hearts to God, he gets everything. When we give our heart to God, he gets everything. Being all in church means it's not something we just do on Sunday. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. And uh, when we start going out and realizing that my every single day, my coaching my son's soccer game, my grocery shopping, my time on the internet, my time on social media, my time at night or in the morning before I go to work or whatever, it's all God's. <laughs> my money, my house, use it for God. My energy, my relationships, my love, use it for God. That's an all in church. Use my time, my talent, my treasure, all in for God. None of that happens if God doesn't have all of your heart first. So today, right now, even right now, if you feel led to come down here and just say, God, I give you my all, come on down, because we're gonna respond. I give you my all. You can stay in your seats if you need to, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a certain location in the church to give your all. But let's pray for each other and let's commit our lives to having all of him. Here's what I'm believing is happening when you give your all. When you give your all, he'll take care of all that you need. He'll take care of all that you're going through. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be taken care of, right? Everything else. God, I thank you for what you're doing as we worship you. Pray, God, that we would commit ourselves to be an all-in church. We commit our lives to giving you our all. We give you our whole heart today to be worked on and ministered to. In Jesus' name. I realize that it may take a journey to surrender everything that you need to surrender. It could take time. My life, I'm still working on how do I give my all to God? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a learning process. It's a journey. But it starts with at least realizing we need to. That's where we're at right now today. And that we need all of God to do all we can so all may know God's love and follow him. We really do. And we need to give God even our stuff that's not doing too well. And then give God our heart and our energy and time to do what is right and what's good. So God wants your worry. He wants your fear. He wants your doubt, your anxiety. Take that from you. He wants you to surrender that. Give it up so you can deposit something fresh and something new in your life. Instead of a spirit of fear, a spirit of, of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you, his love inside of you. So let me pray that over us. God, I pray we would surrender those things that we hold on to that's not of you. There's no place in our hearts for that. God, I pray a deliverance and a freedom from that in Jesus' name today because you fill us instead with your spirit. I pray your spirit would fill us so much that everything else just has to leave. Our hearts and minds would be drenched and soaked and drenched and, and 
completely drown in your presence. Lord, I pray that your spirit would just submerge us and baptize us. Rid everything else out of us that doesn't belong. God, help us to be a church that loves you more than anything else in this world. Help us to be a church that loves one another. And help us to be a church that loves to see people follow Jesus. God, help us to live the full life, the full Christian life, not just part of it, but all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day. We love you so much.